Tina, what's your biggest takeaway from last night's game? Well, my takeaway from Jay Wright's comments, I'm in line for a raise or I'm going to the NBA, Villanova mm. <laughs> board, board, board of Trustees. Yep. No, that's true. But they're not exactly a one-and-done school. No, right? no, no, no. Skip, that performance last night, and I go back a long way. You go back even further. Mm -hmm. But that might be one of the – that I've seen with my own two eyes, that's one of the top five individual performances that I've seen. Individual or Indivi team? Individual. Oh, okay. Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah. I call him Billy Hall. Remember the character for White Man Can't Jump? Uh, do I? Yeah. Skip, he was special last night. Yeah. They were down seven when he came into the ball game. And then over the next stretch, they go on a 34 to 12 run, and they never look back. And every time Michigan would try to do something, mm -hmm. he would snuff it out. Yep. He not only – I mean, you can just look at the 31 points, but he rebounded the ball. Skip, that block, that two-handed block on a dunk, you won't find a better college play all year. Agreed. You might have to go back some years to find a, be a better college play on the defensive end. Agreed. Skip, he got range. Yeah. How do you guard him? And I was listening to John be like, the only time I heard, I wanted, because I wanted to hear what the coach said. He said, even if we had played our best, the way he was playing last night, I don't know if we could have beat him. Mm -hmm. Because he had range. He comes in right off the bench, Skip, and he pulls up from 23, and he swishes. Okay, you hug up on him. He can go by you with either hand and finish at the rim. Mm. Tremendous handle. He was passing the ball. He was rebounding. What surprised me most of all is mm -hmm. that this is a very small team yep. because I don't think they got a guy over 6'8 or 6'9, mm. and they killed Michigan on the board. Mm. Wagner, they just play harder. Wagner was going to have to have a 30-20 a game yep. for them to have a chance, and they was going to have to knock down some of those threes. But every time Michigan got close, this young man would go and say, nah, not tonight, guys. This, this is my moment. Yep. If, you go, if you go back and you look at, he's the only guy since, what, Glenn Rice, mm -hmm. a 30-point performance in a championship game with five three-pointers. Mm -hmm. That reminds you of that game, what Danny Manning did, Danny and the Miracles in 88 to Oklahoma. That was that kind of performance. Magic I, I, Johnson in 79. You, you, or go back to Bill Walton. Yeah, yo, no, Oof. nobody's going to do that 21 for 22 against Memphis. No, no. But I don't remember that, Skip. I just see old highlights of that. But what I've been able to see since 1979, that's a top five performance. Yeah. And to see this – but you know, but guess what, Skip? Only one freshman for Villanova, that's Spellman. Mm -hmm. All, this young man, a redshirt sophomore. Yeah. Brunson, a redshirt junior. All those guys are upperclassmen, been there, done that. Battle-tested. I'm not saying this is the only way, but there's a reason why they were able to withstand. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Ten points. When you win all your tournament games by double figures, yep. oh, you the real deal. Mm -hmm. I am so with you on this. Nova does not win that <laughs> basketball game because, remember, Michigan got off to a strong start. Had no answer for uh, Wagner. Yep. Nova does not win that basketball game unless Dante DiVincenzo comes off the bench <laughs> firing and just lights them up and they go on a 23-7 to run to the end of the half, and he scores 12 of the 23 points. So he scores more than half of their points. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't just bombing threes. He's getting to the rack, and he's blocking shots, chase down breaks with both hands. And it's changing the game because it's just ripping the heart out of a Michigan team that looked like it was game from yes. the start. And when it ended, and I've watched Nova, I don't know, four or five times this year, I sat back and thought, who always catches my eye every time I turn on a Villanova game is this kid. And I thought, why doesn't he get any draft buzz? Why? Seriously, I, I'm, I'm serious about this. Why isn't anybody talking about Dante DiVincenzo as a potential lottery pick? Mm -hmm. And there's one reason and only one reason. He's what? white. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Billy Hall. He's not black. <laughs> no. And... And again, I'm not saying this is wrong or bad. It's just it. It's just a fact because we have been conditioned by history to know that if you project American white kids right. to pro basketball at those two, at, at either if you want to call him a point guard or a combo guard, right. he's, he's, he's got a lot of two guard in him. Because he's got good handles. He's skills. got handles and he can pass it yes. and he can leap now. He's, yeah. he's got some hops. I'm not saying he jumps out of the gym, but he's got yeah. reasonable hops and he's got skills, all kinds of skills. So to, to me, if you look at what's going on right now in the NBA, if you look at shooting guard position, 
Help me out, because I looked hard this morning. I can't find one. I'm talking American kids, not foreign, not the Euro kids, but American white kids at shooting guard in the NBA right now or point guard. Help me out. JJ. JJ Redick. He is the only starter white American kid. He's not a kid anymore. Right. At shooting guard. Right. He's the only one. And then you start scouring, and you see Joe Harris. He lit up your calves. Yeah. Tonight. He's a 6'6 shooting guard, but he's a backup for the Nets. Tyler averaging Johnson. 11. I, he's got a black parent, so I'm going to disqualify Oh, my him. bad. So <laughs> his, his father's black. Okay. But, but anyway, I got it. He's light-skinned. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, then look at that little T.J. McConnell. He's the backup point guard for the Sixers, averaging four assists. Right. But he's a, he is a right. point guard. And then Luke Kennard got drafted out of Duke last year. And he's Almost he been, six, what, he's six, nine, six, ten, No, he no, he's not. No. How tall is he? He's like six, six or so. He, but he's a shooting – right. his position shooting guard. Right. So he's averaging Luke, seven points. But Luke can't handle no, the ball no, like not this. Not like this. J.J. Reddick couldn't handle the ball. No. Now, J.J. Reddick had the range, but J.J. Reddick wasn't finishing like – He wasn't no. finishing at the rim Heck like this no. kid. And he, he can't jump like this. That's the elephant in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And Let's then, be real about then it. the other players, Kyle Korver, and I don't even know where, what position you call. He's six, seven. Right. And, and he's he's just a spot up shooter, right. but he has no handle that yeah, I can he don't see. He really have a position. Right? No. So you don't even call him, you don't call him a shooting guard, no. do you? No. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole scope of American white kids who have who've come to the NBA mm-hmm. or players and made it at shooting guard or point guard. So I think it's Dante DiVincenzo actually gets discounted just because he looks like he's the son of Michael Rappaport. That's yeah. what he looks like they, to me. They, Doesn't he look like yeah. Michael Rappaport? <laughs> they, they, call, yeah. they call him the, the Michael Jordan of Delaware. I know. And if he'd have been, but it's almost like derisive. It, it's almost like uh, sarcastic. Like, De- like Delaware. They, only, do they, they play basketball I in Delaware? So. Wilmington Let's, does. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at it. Do I'm, I'm in amazement. Yeah. Because I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen... Okay, Jimmer Fredette could shoot the ball. J.J. Reddy could shoot the ball. They couldn't put the ball on the floor like this kid. Uh They couldn't handle the ball like this kid. They couldn't lead, rebound the ball. This dude is challenging. Mm -hmm. A 6'6 guy at the rim that's going to throw it down, and who knows how the reaction, the crowd goes wild. They get back in the game. Mm -hmm. You're like, "Uh uh-uh, no. For him, that it lets you know what he's made of. Okay. Because a lot of people wouldn't, t- wouldn't, wouldn't challenge that. But he challenged the dunk with both hands. Both hands. And got both hands Ooh, on the ball. I said, it oh, was pretty now. I said, Obi was just doing it to miss you. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yep. And like, like he told, like told Sid, I fought some better players than you, Sid. That's what mm-hmm. Billy Hole told him in the movie. Mm-hmm. Skip, I don't know what, and, and what's, the, what, what's the scouting report on him? Okay, guard him. Okay, okay we... well, the, the first scouting report is he doesn't even start. Yeah. That's that's why he gets discounted. He comes off the bench. Right, and he has had, but see, and he's had one 30-point game this season. Yeah. But a 30-point game against Butler is one thing. 30 points mm. in the national championship game mm-hmm. when all the chips are to the center of the yep. table yep. is something entirely different. And for him to come away with that performance. Okay. So, this is just me, and I'm a University of Oklahoma fan, both football and basketball, but Trey Young. I've been watching Trey Young all year. I got to tell you, every time I watch this kid, I see more NBA ability in Dante DiVincenzo than I see in Trey Young. Trey Young's a a willowy 6'2". This kid's 6'5 now. He's 6'5". Trey Young's 6'2 and has a hard time finishing. Does this kid have a hard time finishing? He does not. Either hand. Right? He's explosive. He looks like he's got some strength. He's older because he's a third year, as you say. He broke his foot when he was a freshman. Yes. But let's look at Colin Sexton. I watched him, I don't know, four or five times. I watched him against these guys. Yes. This, this kid's better than Colin Sexton. I know Colin Sexton's only 19, but mm-hmm. I, I saw more from him. And that, that Gilgis Alexander who plays for Kentucky, I do like him. Now, he's a Canadian kid, but, right. but he's long. Mm-hmm. He's got like seven-foot wingspan. Right. And I like him at 6'6". But those are the three lottery picks at sort of point guard, shooting guard. Right. Okay? We'll, we'll sh- Trey, Young, Trey Young, I don't know what Trey Young's going to be. But if you just take ability for ability, Trey Young can't touch this kid. He can't. He can't, he can't touch, this touch him. Think of what you're just saying. Because for, for much of the year, Trey Young was the runaway player of the right. year. Think about two, Skip. They fed him coming down the lane. He doesn't lay it up, Mm-mm. he stuffs it. Slammed it. Nasty I mean, slammed it. I'm like, y'all better get him. Yeah. It's too late. Did him right. in. Dante, the yep. Inferno, Vincenzo. Yep. Cook he him. is. They let, they let Opie cook him. They let him cook him. <laughs> <laughs> and and as, as you know, it's, it's not that easy to come off the bench, no. hold into a national championship game, and just say, flip that switch. 
And he just took he, – he gets the ball in his hands, the first shot, he just says, I'm up. He just elevated. And the thing is, Harry, the thing is, Skip, but what they do with him is that they bring him in at the first time out. They do. And he plays the rest of the first quarter. He does. I mean, the first I half. Mean, he plays starter minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. So when you look at it, like it's a 40-minute ball game, and you look at it, and he's played 35 minutes. You're like – but he's he's a, you look at he's a role player. But I don't really know how last night when he got it going like that, he can raise up from 23. Mm -hmm. And if you hug up on him, he can go by you. I don't really know what you do. And like Coach Beeline said from Michigan, even if we play our best game, I don't know if we beat him mm -hmm. because of him doing what he's that doing at correct. that point in time. Maybe it's close. It's not a 19-point game, Skip. Mm -hmm. But I don't see how Michigan no, wins that game with the way he's playing. No, there's no way. So. Trey Young's got a little, like, push set shot that he shoots kind of from the yeah. floor, and he's got a quick release, but oh, he can he, shoot it from 30 feet. This, this kid is elevated. rising. He is elevated. He's, he's going up and yeah. shooting it at an apex. It's hard. One time they had two Michigan kids on him, and he just went right up between them and yeah. shot it untouched, you know, unscathed. And think about the, the player of the year, Brunson, yeah. had a horrible game. He made his first two shots, and I mean, then he, he just he missed, like, good. everything. Since. He just plays hard. Yeah. Though, man. The player of the year. Yeah. And they beat you by 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He plays any type of ball game. Yep. And they got everybody can come back. Now, I believe probably Brunson and, and what Bridges, I think they're probably going to go pro. Uh, but Spellman is the only freshman. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know, Dante. You might need to think about it in the NBA. I, don't, I know. I know. Yeah, so they're like, asking Jay right after the game, is he going to start next year? And I'm saying, who cares if he's going to start? Is he going to declare? That's what I want to know. Oh, if I'm Jay yeah. right, I'm saying start for who? Yeah. Some NBA team, yeah. he won't be starting for me. I mean, I'd love to have him back, hey, but I recommend that he goes. Hey, seriously, you don't think he could come off the bench for an NBA team? Yeah, absolutely. As, as the sixth or seventh man, the leader of yes. the second unit, and yes. change the game? Yes, absolutely. Whew.